प्रोफेसर राजेंद्र कोरान ने फ्रॉम माय चैनल टीच इजी इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी सॉ हाउ टू फाइंड आउट मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ सिमेट्रिकल सेक्शंस सॉलिड एज वेल एज हॉलो नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल सी हाउ टू फाइंड आउट मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ कॉम्पोजिट सेक्शंस Now, what are composite or compound sections? The sections which are made up of two or more basic geometric figures are known as composite or compound section. All the structural sections, that is, I section, channel section, T section, angle section, are come out in this particular category because they are made of two or more rectangles. In this. lecture we will see how to find out movement of inertia of i section so let us start so let us take the problem the overall depth of i section is 200 mm the flanges are 200 mm wide and 10 mm thick the wave is 10 mm thick Calculate the movement of inertia about x-axis and y-y axis. Let us first draw the figure of I section. It is known as I section because it look like alphabet I. So, overall depth of the section is the depth of the section from topmost layer to the bottommost layer. This is 200 mm. Now, how this 180 has come? Let us see. Now I section has two flanges. This is top flange. This is bottom flange. Top flange and bottom flange dimensions are 200 mm wide and 10 mm thick. So this is the width of flange and 10 mm thick. 10 mm thick. Overall depth of the section is 200 mm. So 200 minus 10 minus 10 is 180 mm. This is the depth of this part. Which joins top and bottom flange, which is known as wave, and the thickness of the wave is given 10 mm. Now here you can very clearly see that these two x-axis and y-y axis shown, you can fold the figure so that one part is mirror image of another part. So this particular section is symmetrical about x-axis axis. as well as about y y axis now let us see how to find out movement of inertia of this i section now let us first see let us say that this is a composite figure which consists of three rectangles 1 2 and 3 that is the basic geometric figure i will say that this top flange is part 1 this wave is part 2 and the bottom flange is part 3 now let us first find out i y y because it is simple how it is simple see look here for top flange it is symmetrical about y axis wave is symmetrical about y axis and bottom flange is also symmetrical about y axis whereas this is the individual x x axis of part 1 this is x x axis of part 2 and this is x x axis of part 3 you will see that for part 1 and part 3 the individual x x axis are away from the actual x x axis of the complete section therefore you will have to definitely use parallel axis theorem in case of i y y 1 2 and 3 all of them are symmetrical about y y axis so there is no need of using parallel axis theorem so let us first find out the movement of inertia of i section about y y axis so i will write i y y is equal to all of them are rectangle for rectangle we know that movement of inertia is 
बी डी क्यूब बाय ट्वेल्व फॉर एक्स एक्स एंड डी बी क्यूब बाय ट्वेल्व फॉर वाई वाई सिमिलरली आई वाई वाई विल बी आई वाई वाई ऑफ टॉप फ्लैंज प्लस आई वाई वाई ऑफ बॉटम फ्लैंज प्लस आई वाई वाई ऑफ वेब एज टॉप फ्लैंज एंड बॉटम फ्लैंज आर ऑफ सेम डायमेंशन दिस इज सिमेट्रिकल आई सेक्शन इफ देयर डायमेंशन आर डिफरेंट दैट विल बिकम अनसिमेट्रिकल आई सेक्शन एज दे आर सेम इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग आई वाई वाई फॉर वन एंड थ्री सेपरेटली आई विल मेक इट ट्वाइस ओके सो टू टाइम्स आई वाई वाई इज डी बी क्यूब वॉट इज डी डी इज टेन वॉट इज बी बी इज टू हंड्रेड सो टेन इंटू टू हंड्रेड क्यूब डिवाइडेड बाय ट्वेल्व दिस इज डी दिस इज बी क्यूब बाय ट्वेल्व Why we have multiplied by two? Because top flange and bottom flange are of same dimensions. So instead of writing them separately, I have multiplied it by two. So this is i y y of one plus i y y of three. Now let us take i y y for the wave. so this is i y y of flanges plus d b cube by 12 for the wave what is d 180 what is b 10 cube of that divided by 12 180 into 10 cube divided by 12 and you will find that the answer of this one is 13.35 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so this is the answer of i y y now for i x x this is x x axis of first part x x axis of second part will coincide with overall x x axis and third part is different so let us see how to find out i x x for i x x we will use the symmetry of the section here i can say that if i complete this rectangle in this case it will be square because it is 200 by 200 so what i am doing i am completing this rectangle or a square and now you can see that this outer square and these inner squares are symmetrical about x x axis therefore we can very easily write the expression for x x that is i x x for outer rectangle minus i x x for inner rectangle so this hatched portion is inner rectangle in this case it will be square we cannot say in every case it will be square in this case only it is square so let us write outer rectangle what is outer rectangle what are the dimensions see outer rectangle dimensions are 200 mm that is square 
बाय 200 हंड्रेड एम इनर रेक्टेंगल what is inner rectangle what are the dimensions of inner rectangle see look here this distance distance is 200 mm minus 10 means it will be 190 mm width and what is depth 180 mm now we will find out i x x in this manner look here now i x x is equal to i x x for outer rectangle minus come on i x x for inner rectangle now for rectangle we know that moment of inertia about x x axis is b d cube upon 12 okay so is equal to for outer rectangle what is b 200 mm what is d 200 mm so it will be 200 into 200 cube divided by 12 bd cube actually it is a square so it will be a raised to 4 you can very easily see it is a 200 into 200 cube is 200 raised to 4 minus what is i x x for inner rectangle b d cube by 12 what is b of inner rectangle 200 minus 10 that is 190 and what is d come on d is 180 so 180 cube divided by 12 no doubt you can make this 12 common so i will repeat once again for inner rectangle i x x is b d cube by 12 that is 200 into 200 cube by 12 this is for outer rectangle for inner rectangle b is 190 d is 180 so for outer rectangle it is this one b d cube by do you understand how they are written okay so with the help of scientific calculator you will calculate the value of it which comes out to be 41 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 therefore in this problem we saw how to find out moment of inertia of symmetrical i section again i will repeat because top flange and bottom flange are of same dimensions it is symmetrical for symmetrical section you can make use of symmetry that is outer rectangle minus inner rectangle so i x x is i x x for outer rectangle minus i x x of inner rectangle and the answer comes out to be this one do you follow let us go for the second problem 
an i section has its top flange 40 mm by 10 mm bottom flange 100 mm by 10 mm and wave 10 mm by 120 mm we have to calculate moment of inertia of this i section about its centroidal axis now in the previous problem we saw that i section was symmetrical because its top flange and bottom flanges were of same dimension now he you will find out in this problem top flange is 40 mm wide 10 mm thick and bottom flange is 100 mm wide and 10 mm thick so we cannot say this as symmetrical but this is known as unsymmetrical i section though this is unsymmetrical i section i can surely say that it is symmetrical about y y axis but it is not symmetrical about x x axis therefore our first job is to find out the position of centroid that is y bar from bottom or from top so let us first find out y bar for y bar you studied in your first year that y bar is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 1 2 3 i have already given 1 is top flange 2 is wave 3 is bottom flange a1 is area of top flange that is 40 into 10 so a1 is 400 what is y1 let us take the moments about bottom so this is the centroidal axis of the first part from bottom its distance will be 10 plus 120 plus 10 by 2 so it will be 135 see you have already studied this in applied mechanics i will repeat once again how this 135 has come this is the x x axis of first part so what is its distance from bottom because we are taking the moments at the bottom so it will be 10 plus 120 that is 130 plus 10 by 2 that is 5 that is 135 so this is a1 y1 now let us go for a2 y2 what is a2 120 into 10 that is a2 will be 1 2 0 what is y2 what is y2 y2 will be this is 120 so it will be at this center and what is y2 is this much distance now look here what is this distance can you tell me what is this distance 60 plus 10 that is 70 okay see look here what is this distance 60 plus 10 that is 70 okay so this distance is 60 plus 10 that is 70 so this will be a2 y2 plus a3 y3 what is a3 a3 is 100 into 10 that is 1000 what is y3 y3 is very simple we are taking the moments at the bottom so this is 10 so its centroidal axis will be this one so what is this one that is y3 that will be 10 by 2 that is 5 you can say that this is equal to ay bar because i cannot write denominator here okay so from this if you put the value of a what is total value of a so y bar is equal to this particular one 
400 into 135 plus 1200 into 70 plus this one divided by a what is a a will be 1200 plus 1000 plus 400 okay and finally you will find that the value of y bar comes out to be 55 mm from bottom this is the additional step because this is unsymmetrical section do you understand so now this is y bar that is distance of x x axis from the bottom so now i can write this particular distance as 55 mm definitely from bottom so what will be the remaining distance from top total depth is 140 so 140 minus 55 therefore it will be 85 So, do you understand this? This is the first step in which we have found out the position of xx axis that is y bar. As it is symmetrical about vertical axis, this will be x bar. So, you need not find out x bar in this case. Okay. Now, again, concentrate on the figure. Top flange, V and bottom flange all these three parts are symmetrical about y y axis so it is not necessary to use parallel axis theorem as far as i y y is concerned so let us first find out the simple one that is i y y so i will write i y y equals to i y y of first part plus i y y of second part plus i y y of third part okay now let us write the expression what is i y y for rectangle it is d b cube by 12 okay so by 12 will be common so i will take 1 by 12 common outside into bracket for first part that is top flange d is 10 b is 40 so it will be d that is 10 into 40 cube by 12 we have taken common plus what is for second part what is d for second part 120 is d and b is 10 so it will be 120 into 10 cube and what is the third part is bottom flange what is depth of bottom flange 10 what is width 100 so it will be 10 into 100 cube bracket complete so this is db cube by 12 it is simple one 1 by 12 i have taken common okay and the value comes out to be using calculator it comes out to be 8.97 into 10 raised to 5 mm raised to 4 this is the value of iyy definitely iyy is simple to calculate in this particular problem 
okay now let us calculate i x x for i x x it is not so simple as of i y y because 1 2 and 3 all the three parts are not symmetrical about x x axis so for x x axis again i will write the same okay that is i x x will be i x x 1 plus i x x 2 plus i x x 3 Now this is important to find i x x i y y and i y y we calculated i x x 1 2 and 3 using parallel axis theorem. So let us first calculate i x x 1 okay. So see carefully what is parallel axis theorem movement of inertia about centroidal axis plus area into square of the distance between the two axes. So, let us write I x x. Directly I will write I x x 1. That is concentrate for this one. What is I x x BD cube by 12? That is its self movement of inertia. What is B? Is 40. What is D? Is 10 cube upon 12. Now the second term area into H square. I will say A1 into H1 square. A1 is area of first part. 40 into 10 will be 400. What will be H in this case? This is the most important part in this problem. What is H? Look here now. This is xx axis of the first part and this is xx axis of the complete section. BD cube by 12 was about this axis and we have to shift this moment of inertia to this axis means the distance between this axis and this axis will be H1. What is H1? Now look here. This particular distance is h1 i will show h1 now tell me what is this distance so can i say that this h1 distance will be this particular distance that is 85 minus this distance that is 10 by 2 so it will be 85 minus 10 by 2 that is 75 square do you follow this now we will calculate the things uh, afterwards we will write the expression for i x x 2 now that is for wave. What is wave? This is the wave. Width is 10. Depth T is 120. So BD cube by 12 that is 10 into 120 cube divided by 12 plus area of wave is 1 2 0 0. into h square now what will be h look here now this is centroid of second part and this is centroid of total section so the distance between these two axis will be the value of h2 
सो वॉट विल बी दिस वैल्यू कैन यू टेल मी वॉट विल बी दिस वैल्यू मे आई से दैट इट इज एटी फाइव माइनस सी लुक यर दिस डिस्टेंस इज वन ट्वेंटी हाफ ऑफ दैट मीन्स दिस इज हाउ मच इज दिस सिक्सटी ओके सो दिस मच इज सिक्सटी करेक्ट दिस वन इज सिक्सटी प्लस वॉट इज दिस वच यस सिक्सटी प्लस टेन इज सेवेंटी सो दिस डिस्टन्स विल बी एटी फाइव माइनस सिक्सटी प्लस टेन और अदर वे आई विल टेल यू लुक यर वॉट इज दिस डिस्टन्स सिक्सटी वॉट इज दिस डिस्टन्स टेन सो वॉट इज दिस टोटल डिस्टन्स सिक्सटी प्लस टेन सेवेंटी माइनस फिफ्टी फाइव विल बी एच टू सो इट इज सेम ओके सो आई विल राइट इट एज सिक्सटी How is sixty? This distance is one twenty by two is sixty plus this as ten minus fifty five. Do not forget to make it square. So this will be i x x two. Now let us write the expression for i x x three. For this third part, B D cube by twelve, B is hundred. What is D? Ten cube of it divided by twelve plus area. What is area of bottom flange? One thousand into h square. Again, what is h? H is very important. Here it will be h three square. See, look here. We have to shift. Movement of inertia from this to this one, so this distance will be h three. Distance between two parallel axes, h three. Now tell me what will be h three. It is very simple that. What is this total distance? Fifty-five minus half of ten. Okay, so it will be fifty-five minus. While writing, please write it like this, because when you will uh, study it from notebook at the time of exam, you will not understand how five has come. So write it as ten by two. Don't forget to make it square. So this is i x x three. so by scientific calculator you can get the value of i x x 1 as 2.56 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 see look here make it habit to calculate all the values because calculations are equally important let us calculate i x x 2 it comes out to be 1.71 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 please calculate it and please confirm your answer i x x 3 that is a bottom flange is 2.51 Into ten raised to six mm raised to four. So once again, I will quickly revise this. As part one, part two, and part three, all of them are not symmetrical about x-axis axis. We will have to use parallel axis theorem. So I will write i x x is equal to i x x one plus i x x two plus i x x three. Let us see what is i x x one. Its self, I will be 
40 into 10 cube by 12 bd cube by 12 plus area is 40 into 10 that is 400 plus h square what is h this is centroidal axis of part 1 this is centroidal axis of complete section so the distance between two parallel axes is h1 and what is h1 how i have calculated h1 see this particular distance is equal to this distance minus this distance therefore it is 85 minus what is this distance as this is 10 this is 10 by 2 and it has calculated to be 2.56 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 now second portion 10 into 120 cube by 12 is self moment of inertia plus area is 12 100 120 into 10 into h square what is h h2 is this one this is centroidal axis of second part this is centroidal axis of complete section so the distance between two parallel axes is h2 how you will calculate h2 look here now you can calculate h2 as this complete distance this complete distance minus this distance see look here this distance minus 55 what is this complete distance what is this distance 120 by 2 that is 60 plus 10 minus 55 bracket square it comes out to be 1.71 into 10 raised to 6 now let us go for third part bottom flange ix63 is equal to b d cube that is 100 into 10 cube by 12 plus area that is 1000 into h3 square what is h3 this is centroidal axis of third part and this is centroidal axis of the complete section so the distance between through the two axes is h3 so what is h3 say look here what is this total distance minus half the distance total distance is 55 minus this distance is 10 by 2 bracket square which comes out to be 2.51 if you add all the three that is ixx1 ixx2 and ixx3 you will get the moment of inertia of i section about the horizontal centroidal axis that is ixx and it comes out to be ix6 is equal to 2.56 that is ix61 plus 1.71 plus 2.51 i have taken into 10 raised to 6 common so which becomes easy to add into 10 raised to 6 which comes out to be 6.78 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. So this is how in this particular lecture we solved two problems of I section. One problem was symmetrical I section that was previous problem and second problem is unsymmetrical I section it is necessary to do the calculation and ho at home and I hope you will do the same in the next lecture we will see how to find out moment of inertia of another structural section thank you